Hello there everybody, so good to see you. You know, it's funny, every time that I bring up the Tales of series on this channel, most of the time, more than not, it's either something negative or I'm very tepid about the news I'm talking about. This is another one of those videos. Fans and the series itself have had a pretty rough last few years. If you've been on this channel, you've witnessed my entire character arc unfold with Tales of Symphonia remastered, or demastered, if you want to call it that. It got better, but by the time it actually got to that point, its reputation of a port that gets worse and worse with every single release just kind of damned it. Tales of Arise got DLC recently, uh, two years after the game released. The developers said there wasn't even going to be DLC initially, and then decided, hey, you know what, let's do it anyway, there's a demand for that, right? A nice surprise, I suppose, the, the DLC was perfectly just alright. Arise is so weird, man, like it had a really good positive first reception, and it felt like it was actually advancing the series into something new. It felt like the series was potentially going to be brought back into the limelight again, the way that Symphonia helped bolster it in overseas sales years prior. But after like maybe a week or so, people just kind of stopped talking about it. Tales of Arise had a five year gap from that game to the previous one in the Mothership series, which was Tales of Berseria which is kind of unheard of because ever since the first release of Tales of Fantasia all the way back in 1995, Tales games have been very consistent. The longest amount of time that a Tales game has ever released between each other is like three years, sometimes every other year, and almost for a long time very commonly there was a release every single year. A fun fact, the first PAX that I ever went to, PAX West 2021, Tales of Arise was there and it was the largest booth on the entire show floor, and that's because Nobody else was there. I think what's the most deflating about this is that during those two years, the Tales studio could have been working on an entirely new game, but instead they were working on just kind of okay DLC in a game in a world that I was pretty much satisfied with and I wanted to move on to see what was next for the franchise instead. Well, it's a good thing they have mobile games to fall back on, like Tales of Crystoria, which ended services in February of 2002. Or Tales of Luminaria, which ended services in July of the same year. These, along with other mobile games that have also ended services prior, like Tales of the Rays or Tales of Link, uh, show that maybe the mobile market isn't suitable for the Tales of series. The most recent mobile games, like Tales of Crystoria, for example, they really dip into that gotcha element where I guess you can do that, but in reality, there isn't like a huge amount of Tales characters to pull from in a game like this. It's not really meant for that kind of format, and it's hard to keep players engaged as you continue to make updates, which you're expected to for a game of this kind of format. Fire Emblem Heroes has a huge amount of characters that can be updated constantly, as well as alternate forms and what have you. And then there are other games that really focus on just one or two characters per update, like Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail, for example, that really feed into doing updates, focus on that one character and a story bit that kind of circles around them. Like, they do it very well. But the difference is, with those games, they're original characters being introduced in a world that's slowly being built up. Whereas with Tales, they're established characters that people just want to see their favorites right away. And with every single release, they just don't seem to understand what works well or what players want. And that's aside the fact that some games like Restoria had a lot of bugs to deal with, so. There's just a disconnect between what kind of game it wants to be and what kind of game it needs to be. And that caused the services to end a lot sooner than they probably could have. Well, it's no surprise that mobile games eventually end service and are taken down, right? At least the mainline series will always remain available on storefronts like the eShop or the PlayStation Network, for example, right? Right? I need you all to understand that the PlayStation 3 has six Tales games that you can own physically. Six entire Tales games. And I have them all right here because of course I do. The first title on the PS3 was Tales of Graces F. Uh, this is a unique one because the original version was in Japan only. This is actually the enhanced version of the title. They added a little F here because it stands for future. This title has an epilogue that goes beyond the main story and is only available on the enhanced PS3 version. So it's really cool that we got this instead of getting the base version and then waited to see if maybe we got the enhanced one later. 
That happened multiple times throughout this game series. This is a pretty good first entry into the series on the PS3. Uh, very safe story. There isn't really much more I can say beyond the fact that it's about a tale of friendship and togetherness and what have you. But the battle system, as many Tales fans will tell you, is probably some of the best in the entire series. However, this is locked on the PS3. It has not released in any other console whatsoever. Much like the next title I have here, Tales of Exilia. This one is the 15th anniversary celebration title. And this one is actually a big step improvement, I believe, to Tales of Races. It has a much more complex story. There's two different protagonists that you can choose the path of one or the other. It doesn't change a whole lot of things except for like who actually you're following throughout the main story, of course, but they mostly travel together. So it doesn't really make much of a difference one way or another. Not a huge difference, but it is cool to have two protagonists in a Tales game. The combat leaned a little bit more back towards games prior to Graces F, like Tales of Vesperia or Tales of Symphonia, for example, but I think that's when it really started to find its footing as a Tales game in the HD era. But as I said before, this also is only available on the PS3. Now I know you probably already know the story with this one, but Tales of Symphonia Chronicles is the collection of the original Tales of Symphonia, as well as its sequel, Dawn of the New World. Uh, this is another unique case in which Dawn of the New World was actually already released on the Wii, much like Tales of Graces, except we actually got this version. Uh, these two have absolutely no differences between each other. I, I guess one is in HD, but there's no like added content, there's no extra story elements, they're pretty much the same game. The nice thing about Dawn of the New World, for as uh, mediocre as it is, it's at least available on another platform. Uh, unlike Grace's F, unfortunately. Tales of Symphonia, of course, is available in many places on Steam, on modern consoles, as a remastered version. This version is one that runs a lot better than those, so if you, if you had to get one, I would say play it on the PS3 if that's at all possible. Probably my favorite of the bunch that's on the PS3 is the sequel to Tales of Exilia. It's called Tales of Exilia 2. It's not very common that the Tales series gets a direct sequel, which is funny for me to say because I just went on talking about Chronicles, but this is probably the best one on the PS3, as I just mentioned. It's my favorite for sure. And uh, unfortunately, as we're gonna be discussing in a moment, uh, it's been delisted from the PSN storefronts. Not every Tales game has shared this fate, but before I get too far ahead of myself, the final Tales of game that's available physically on the PS3 is Tales of Assyria. Uh, this is, of course, the PS4 version, but you can get it for the PS3. I, I just really wanted the shiny new thing for my PS4. I admit, I didn't get a PS4 until this came out. And yeah, that is six Tales of games that are available physically for a single console on the PS3, which is fantastic. There, Some of them are remakes, some of them are completely new titles, some of them are cross-gen. But at the end of the day, if you're a Tales fan, the PS3 is really a system that you can get into. Except for the fact that a lot of them were just kind of doing some weird stuff on the PSN network. So here's the thing, Tales of Graces, Tales of Exilia, they're available on the PSN shop, but only as a duo pack. You can't get them separately, you have to buy them as a bundled collection. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, cool, I can get Tales of Graces and Tales of Exilia, we get, they're still on there, but for some reason, how come, how come they didn't do Tales of Exilia 1 and 2 together? How come it was just these two that aren't the duo pack? I mean, nothing against Graces, they're fine games, but why do they do that when they have the Symphonia Chronicles available? Oh, and that's actually another thing. Tales of Symphonia Chronicles is not available anymore on the storefront. However, you can get them separately. Huh? So you're telling me that I can get these two as a duo pack together. That's fine, I guess. If I'm missing one or the other, that kind of sucks to buy it again, but I will have at least both games. Chronicles has been delisted as a duo pack. I don't know the reasoning behind it. I mean, you can still get both of them separately. It's a weird decision to make, but I, I guess at least they're there. But the crime against all this is the fact that Tales of Exilia 2 just doesn't exist anymore. I looked up the storefronts and the sequel is just, it's, it's not available. And that's a problem because Tales of Exilia 1 and 2 and Graces, they're stuck on the PS3. At least for us over here overseas, we can't get these anywhere else anymore. This Tales series has, for some reason, 
pumped everything into the PS3 and then just kind of forgot about it after that point because Zisteria is the only one, aside from the original Symphonia, I guess, that's been released on Steam, modern consoles, you can play it anywhere, along with Berseria and Vesperia, because those two are also games that have been recently released and re-released back into the public. But there was absolutely no communication from Bandai Namco whatsoever telling us that these games were going to be delisted. And what makes this a bit stranger is that if you recall, back in the year 2021, Sony reversed a decision in which they said they were going to shut down the PS3 and the Vita storefronts. There was so much negative feedback that they had to turn back and say, oh, never mind, I guess we'll just leave it there instead. And it's been that way ever since. At some points, yeah, those storefronts are probably going to shut down, kind of like how the eShop had also shut down. Ever since then, it's just remained open. And I mean, no one's complained about that. Please leave these doors open to us. There are games on there that even if we're not deciding to get them right now, we might still decide to get them in the future. When you just pull games that you have absolutely no communication with, uh, it's gonna upset some people because maybe they still want to go back and get those. This brings me to the Vita storefront, which I haven't even brought up yet until now. Tales of Hearts R is the only Tales of game that's available on the Vita, and it's also been delisted on the Vita storefront. I, I can't believe we have this. So, Tales of Innocence and Tales of Hearts, they were available on the Nintendo DS, and on the Vita, we got uh, Tales of Hearts R. In Japan, they also saw the release of Tales of Innocence R. This game isn't even dubbed in English. It's only been translated via the script in English, and it has the full Japanese dub on it. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> even if it's not fully English dubbed, at least I can understand the story and play through it by official means. I wish they did that for Innocence R and for a lot of other Tales games in the series, but they didn't. They did it for Tales of Hearts R, which I, I think is actually a pretty good a Tales game. It stands up very well with the others. And they took it off the storefront too. They... <laughs> Why would they remove this? I don't understand. This game originated on the DS, so you're not going to get like the most enhanced visuals ever. It's not going to look as beautiful as Berseria or Arise, but it absolutely holds its own as a very competent Tales game. From what I can gather, on the NA storefronts, we've lost Tales of Hearts R, Exilia 2, and Symphonia Chronicles. So Graces and Exilia 1 pack are still available, and Symphonia 1 and Dawn of the New World can only be bought separately. In the European storefront, however, they lost Hearts R, Graces F, and Zisteria. Zilia and Symphonia were delisted years ago. This means that slowly but surely, the Tales of series has been just disappearing outside of the Japanese audience. And this is just so unfortunate because the series is actually very healthy and popular in Japan itself. I mean, every year they have a Tales of Festival where people come together, they have events and panels, they talk to the voice actors, and it's like a, it's like a few days of an event. I think the next one is happening in uh, the summer of this year. There's always a theme to it. It's really fun. And that's something that they really just embrace with the fans out there. The Tales of series is such a fan-driven community, and it's beautiful to see that sort of thing being given back to the fans. The series has always been very open to crossing over with each other, even in ways that usually wouldn't make canonical sense, but they just do it anyways. There's an entire series based on that called Tales of the World Radiant Mythology. We got only the first game here on the PSP but there was a second and a third one, also on the PSP, that we never got to see the light of day of because the original one just didn't sell well enough. And so they were like, oh, I guess the Western audiences, they're not into this sort of thing. And I guess maybe it's true that there is a dedicated fan base that is just almost too small to warrant and to justify bringing these games over. I, mean, I have a whole pile of tales of games over here, some of them which have never seen the light of day in any other capacity. Uh, you have a game like this. This is like the black sheep of the series, Tales of Legendia. You can just tell just from the cover in the art style and the character design that this is not made by the typical Tales of Studio, but it came out the same year as another Tales of game, which I'll bring up in a moment. Um, very unique story. I love how in this game, the world map is a massive boat. You open up the world map and it's just a big long boat shape. Contextually, this was a very small, only a portion of the world on a boat. It's, it has a very 
big emphasis on the sea, and I, I thought it was really cool for that. Uh, the music in this game, the music is almost way too grand and big for its own britches. Uh, <laughs> if you know the composer Goshina, he's done a lot of fantastic, very exotic sounding music uh, full of like electric violins, vocals. I swear, when I heard the soundtrack for Nier Automata, I thought Goshina was doing that soundtrack, if you want an idea of what this one sounds like. But unfortunately, very much forgotten. It, it's kind of, it kind of takes steps back after playing Symphonia. It's a very uh, linear 2D fighting game when it comes down to the battle sequences, uh, back to original games like Fantasia or Destiny, which kind of turned people off of it because Symphonia was such an advancement of the battle system but I think it still deserves attention. Unfortunately, it's only on the PS2. It is absolutely just, it is stuck on the PS2. And I don't know if Namco Tail Studio is ever going to do anything to bring that out to other audiences. I think Bandai Namco has been reaching out and asking people in like different polls and whatnot of what game do you want to see like re-released, remastered. And I mean, they did that with Symphonia to various degrees of success over the years, but it feels like they're just not really caring as much as they should anymore. And I'm worried and anticipating because next year is going to be the year 2025. The original Tales of Game, Tales of Fantasia, came out in 1995. It's going to be the 30th anniversary of this game. And that's impressive. There's not a lot of series that have made it to 30 years and are still like prominent and relevant in certain circles, like this one, especially in Japan. Uh, we only got the Game Boy Advance version of Fantasia. It's a, it's definitely the worst version <laughs> of this game. Come forth, thunder of the god. What the heck is that? It ends here. Indignation. There's been the original SNES version on the Super Famicom, which is fantastic. Uh, there's a full voice version when it got re-released years later. Uh, but we got the Game Boy Advance version with uh, extremely bright color palettes and very crunchy, badly compressed English audio. Uh, I would love it if this was remade in some way or form. To show, just, just to show the roots of the Tales series, that would be something that I think would respect the series very well because they love celebrating their anniversaries. If you look over here, Tales of Don, Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World in the corner right here, it's celebrating the, the, the 10th anniversary of the Tales series. Tales of Exilia over here in the corner representing the 15th anniversary of the Tales series. Man, 15 years? It's been twice as much time since this series has been out that this game came out. That's incredible. And if you want to do something big, do something big for your 30 years. I'm guessing they might announce something at the Tales of Festival this year. Who knows? I am waiting with bated breath to see if they do anything like actually out there this time for the Tales of series. And in reality, it might just be celebrated only in Japan. We might not see anything for that over here in the West, despite how well that the series is beloved out here. Um, because the Tales series just kind of is not really the priority over here in the West anymore. The worst case scenario is that the Tales of 30th Anniversary will only be celebrated in Japan. Um, I don't think that'll be the case. We'll probably get at least something because how well Arise did over here, even if it was just kind of short-lived for that moment. Uh, I don't know how well the DLC sold for them, if they surpassed expectations or not, or at least overseas. But. For the 30th anniversary, I really hope that we get something that's not just, oh, let's port another game to the Switch or whatever. You could have something really special be released for the Switch 2, whenever that'll come. They're gonna be released in the same year, assuming that it comes out next year. They could already be working on something really big for Fantasia. I think that there's a really good possibility that the Tales of Festival will have something for that. Uh, I fell in love with this series with games like Symphonia because of how the uh, linear motion battle system and whatever names they call it from that point forward, uh, the battle systems are fantastic. They just made so much more sense to me as a opposed to a turn-based RPG, which I still love, but it made more sense that everything is happening all at once. And I think that's kept the series alive for a very long time. 
And I'm just hoping that there are those individuals out there that still see the merits of this series and bring it out over here because I, I don't want to see it completely fade away. And here I am hoping and coping that at the very least we get games like Tales of Hearts R which may not be dubbed in English but still get their scripts translated so that a lot more of us out here in the West and other places overseas can enjoy this series for what it is. If it were up to me, I would want to bring back my personal favorite Tales game. That is Tales of the Abyss for the PS2. Uh, it only came out on both the PS2 and also, miraculously, on the 3DS. I guess Namco Tales Studios thought, oh wait a minute, we don't have a Tales game on the Nintendo 3DS. I think we better put one on there. Which one haven't we ported in a while? Tales of the Abyss? Grab Tales of the Abyss, put it on the 3DS. We'll have everyone be happy about that, right? You know, I'm not gonna lie, the 3D is actually really good in this. I think that this series has so many merits to it. There are so many good things about this series. The, the characterizations are among the best that I've ever seen in any game. When I play a Tales of game and I listen to like the skits and the character interactions, I don't recall myself laughing as much as I do in any other game other than the Tales of series. It is so funny, it is very charming, and it does take itself seriously. Tales of the Abyss has probably one of the most serious stories, most well thought out stories. For as much as I know, the protagonist gets some some flack every now and then. Um, there's this one and also Tales of Exilia 2, my other favorite one, uh, also has probably one of the darkest stories that I've ever had the uh, the pleasure of experiencing in a, in a game. This is Peak Tales right here. You see this right here? That's Yuri Lowenthal and Yuri Lowenthal going at it. This is one of the best scenes that you can see in this game. That's pretty much everything I had to say about the Tales series today. Uh, games, not just Tales games, a lot of games are being delisted at an alarming rate and it's, it's discouraging. Like, these are pieces of entertainment and media that there are some people, there are generations beyond us and those that are not able to experience it yet, uh, they won't be able to in any capacity. We can only rely on things like remakes and remasters and ports and such to continue to go down the pipeline of consoles that release after them. And as time goes on, with so many games being released every year, some of them just get left in the dust. And so, yeah, I hope that your favorite games out there, no matter what they are, if they haven't been remade already, if they haven't already been preserved in some shape or form, that they do have that opportunity to do so. And if not, that I hope you have a preserved physical copy of these games. Because with certain ones, as we have already discussed, they're not going to be available anymore uh, by any means in the foreseeable future. Our favorite games and our favorite series, they each have their own values to us, and sometimes it's really up to the fans to do what we can to keep these alive. And if I can't get a remake for this game, I get it, I understand, that's just the way everything has to be. But if I can't get a remake for this series, what about a remake for this series instead? Think about that. Till we meet again. <laughs>